turn it around there on the camera. So we are now live. All you out there on in Facebook, we thank you for joining us today. I know there's uh, people all over that watch it, and uh, this last week there's been a real surge. Uh, the different meetings that we had have been watching on Facebook Live, and so we, we pray that it be a blessing to you. Uh, we do have a meeting here that uh, for those that would like to step out. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, to share something with you that um, my, my personal... My personal opinion is, this, again, this is my personal opinion, I have never elected to give the government control of my health. I make all my own health decisions. And so, uh, people, if I want to go into a restaurant and uh, nobody's wearing a mask, that's my choice whether I go in there or not. If people are wearing masks, that's my choice whether I go in there or not. Uh, it's my choice. And so, uh, and... and so if I'm willing to take the risk, that's, that's my choice. It's not the church's responsibility. It's not the restaurant's responsibility. And so we had some meetings here this last week. We're wanting the businesses to open up. We want people to get out and get involved in the community. Life has to go on. Life did not end with COVID. And so we are going to have, have life. And so you're welcome to come to church. Uh, and but if you uh, do not, that's fine. We'll continue to do Facebook Live. So, but we have people all over the country that watch Facebook Live. So, uh, God opened that door for us to minister people all over the place. So, Hallelujah. This morning, I want I'm going to talk about because we're coming into the Christmas season, and uh, it's what sat, uh, Saturday is the 25th. I think that's that's Christmas. Friday, Friday, okay, Friday is, so Christmas Eve is Thursday, so it's this week, so I had uh, some thoughts I was going down, and and I, I said, man, the Lord really gave me something, uh, and her, Shirley said, do you remember this is Christmas? Oh, shoot, well, I'll do that next week, so, <laughs> so, uh, but I want, I want to talk about something that uh, uh, Christmas is a focus a lot for children, you know, gifts and sharing uh, gifts with one another and showing uh, a family how much we appreciate, how much we love one another. And so it is uh, a time of, of giving and sharing. And so much, uh, it just it frustrates me that uh, hearing these so-called professionals saying you can't have, you yeah, can't have Christmas, you can't have meeting, and there's families that are that are hurting, families that are older, especially older people and stuff that are, are really hurting because they can't be with their family. They can't be together. Um, truth be told, our family has not stopped. We, uh, we have our grandkids and our son comes over every, every Tuesday and they're in school, they're doing their stuff, stuff. we have a dinner together. And... Uh, the government's not going to tell me that I can't meet with my family. And so Christmas, we're going to have Christmas. It's, we're, we're, life goes on. Uh, so, uh, but it's a time that we, we share, we engage, we laugh, we love together. And uh, the focus, a lot of times, can get focused on the gifts. And... That the reason, we used to have a, uh, a sign that we, I think we still have it. It's uh, Jesus is the reason for the season. And it's about Jesus and what he did. And so we could look at, uh, man, I wish I had this gift or had that gift. We need to focus, and that's what I feel the Lord showed me today, is a focus on what gifts did Jesus give us. Amen. If Jesus is the reason for the season, what what did he present to us? Uh, we can go back, you know, the, the child in the manger, Jesus born in a manger and all that stuff. And that, over the last couple of years I did, okay, where was Jesus actually born? Uh, the Michtal Eder, that's where the sacrificial lambs were, were birthed. It's uh, outside of Bethlehem. It's, a, it's, a, it's called uh, uh, the Tower of the Flock. It was a tower where the priests could sit. It was, those were Levitical priests that were in the tower, they would watch over the lambs that were for the sacrifice. That's where they were at, was in Bethlehem. 
and under that was a cave, kind of under that, and that was sanctified and it was made holy uh, by the rituals, blessings, and all that kind of stuff. So when the lambs would come in there, they were uh, it would birth, they would be cleaned, and they would be swaddled. They, and this not, didn't happen with all the other lambs, but this was the ones that were going to go to the temple for the sacrifice. So where was Jesus born? He was born in the Mictal Eder. He was born in that. And so when the angel appeared to, uh, to the, the shepherds in the field, he said, you will find him laying in a manger and swaddled. They knew exactly where he was at. Because there's... there's, there's, there's there's uh, uh, mangers all over the place. But they knew it specifically. And this was where he came. He, gave his, he came for us. God came incarnate for you and I. And uh, gave us gifts. And that's what I want to focus on. What he came for was to uh, give us these gifts. And so I want to focus, first of all, is... Uh, in Matthew, in the, in the Christmas story, in Matthew 1, 20, uh, 2 through 23, and it says, So all, all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. That was a... Uh, a unique saying because they never heard of God with us. We God's in heaven and we're down here and uh, and stuff. So, but all of a sudden now it's God. Emmanuel's God with us. So, what what does it mean that God's with us? Is it just a, a nice saying? Is God with us? Yeah, God's with us all the time. You know all this stuff. God's omnipresent. But no, that's why I want to look at the specific things that it means. God is with us. Number one, the first, the first gift that was as given to mankind was the gift of salvation. In Romans 8, uh, uh, 5, 18 through 19, uh, <clears throat> maybe because uh, I, I scrambled the words up there, the numbers, it's a miracle I'm even doing what I'm doing because I have dyslexia. <laughs> and, uh, and so when I get reading and stuff, and sometimes things will start scrambling up on me, and... Uh, uh, I, I told the Lord when he called me to, to pastor, Lord, I, I can't do this. And because I hated reading and all that stuff. And the Lord said, I don't want you to, for that. He said, I want you for your heart. So, uh, so uh, at times I will screw things up and I'll have to stop and I'll have to start over again. So be patient with me. So uh, uh, it's all about God's glory. God's gifting, God calling, and God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So I'm one of those foolish guys that God is confounding the wise. Why is he doing that? So in Romans 5, 18 through 19, Therefore, as though one man offense, ju uh, offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man righteous acts, act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners, but by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. So the first gift that we receive is salvation. Jesus came and died for us so that we can be reconciled back to the Father, that all of our sins, past, present, and future, will be done away with. But that happens... When we accept the gift, it's one of the things when I'm, uh, I, the Lord prompted me to, to share with us is, what would it be like if you go to your uh, Christmas, and here's your gifts, and, the, and your mom and dad give you the gift. Oh, what a great gift. I am so glad I got this gift. A month goes by. Oh, I'm so glad I got this gift. Oh, look at this gift. Two months go by. Oh, look at my gift. Ain't it pretty in that package? And we go, and we've never unpackaged the gift. See, a lot of times people are walking that way. Oh, the gift of salvation is out there. God has given us this free gift of salvation. 
But to receive that gift and open that gift is I have to invite Jesus into my heart. That activates that gift. See, there's a lot of people out there, and it's a concern I've had is there's a lot of people in church that intellectually acknowledge God. I believe there's a God. I believe in Jesus. I believe Him out there. But the question is, have you invited Him into your heart? That's unpackaging that gift. And when you unpackage that gift, then it becomes a reality in you, and the Holy Spirit comes, and we, we will talk about the other gift here. And so, so the concern I have is how many people think they acknowledge God, that God is real, all that stuff, but they've never invited Him into the heart. That means they've never unpackaged that gift. And that He becomes alive and He becomes vibrant in, to us. And so the concern I have today is how when we accept Jesus into our heart, we become transformed. Our, our thinking becomes transformed. We become renewed in our mind and understanding Clarity comes to us. And so what happens, I have a concern with people I talk with that are Christians, but their mind has not been renewed. Uh, They're just, it's like one of the big issues is, is abortion. How can someone who is born again and the sanctity of life, and Jesus said, suffer not the little children to come unto me, For such is the kingdom of heaven. And if you do to one of these, it'd be better that a millstone be tied around your neck and thrown into the deepest sea. That's Jesus' attitude towards children. But yet we can say, I'm a Christian, but I I believe in abortion. That's to me, that means the mind has not been renewed. You have maybe have God up here, but I don't think you have God down here. And so, and so there's the gift of salvation has to be unpacked. Lord, come into my heart. Come into me and fill me. And in, a lot of times in my prayer, I just, Lord, just fill me with your presence. I want more of you. I want more. And he's, he's there. He's there inside of us when we invite him into our heart. Scripture tells us you love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. What's the number one? It's the heart. It's the heart issue. It's dealing with the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You start focusing on the importance of the heart, how we function. We are functioning out of our heart, not out of our mind, will, emotion, intellect. And so, this is a free gift of salvation, and we must invite Him into our heart. And if you haven't done that, you need to do that. Number two, the second gift. In Acts 2, 8-38. Then Peter said unto him, Repent, and every one of you you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call." So the gift of the Holy Spirit is specifically saying this is not just for this time, this is for all of those that believe. All of us that come into the kingdom of heaven. The gift of the Holy Spirit has been given to us. The Holy Spirit dwells in our heart. He does not dwell in temples and buildings made by hands. He only dwells within inside of us. We are the temple, we are the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. In us, in each one of us. If we get invited Jesus into our heart, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells with us. And in the Holy Spirit comes, He comes with the fullness of the Godhead. He comes into us with gifts. And, uh, I don't want to go into that right now, but the nine gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of, uh, of uh, speaking in tongues, there's, uh, uh, which is a supernatural prayer language, glossolalia. And it's a, it's a, a, a language that... It's from my spirit to God, and the devil can interpret it. He don't know what I'm saying. See, I was talking with someone the other day that about how that how does the 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 devil come into our life and try to torment us and do things because he's his his imps are out there watching, watching. When we open doors to the enemy, if I I've talked about if I open a door to pornography, 
He sees that I've opened the door, and now I've, I've invited him to come in and torment me in that area. Uh, if, uh, promiscuous relationships or what, whatever it is, uh, stealing money. Uh, I've talked about when I was at Costco and I walked out with an item, it was a $3 item. No, I had to go back because I didn't want to open the door to the enemy. And so the Holy Spirit inside of me prompting me and helping me to walk out this life. We will make mistakes, but we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And when we, it's brought to our attention, you screwed up here. Oh, Lord, I, I repent. I repent of that. So as I have the gift of the Spirit inside of me and praying. Uh, some of them may say, well, if I'm speaking in an unknown language, how do I know what I'm praying? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's the things in your heart? And things that are of the Spirit, you may not know what's going on, but God does, your Spirit does, and so we're praying in communion with God. And that's, <coughs> we, we need the Holy Spirit. This hour that we're living, we have to have the Holy Spirit functioning in our life and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. A lot of times, as I'm uh, trying to get, well, Lord, where do you want to to go, what do, you want, what do you want me to share on Sunday or at a meeting and stuff? I'll just spend time praying in the Spirit, and all of a sudden thoughts will be coming to me. It's the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to me. And so, and especially in the, the culture we're living in, and you don't know if <clears throat> you're driving down the street and you just feel prompted, don't go that way. Okay, I was going to go that way, but uh, I shouldn't go that way. Well, then you find out there was a riot down there or something. Or, some, you're going now and, and uh, you're prompted by the Spirit. Go over and talk to that person. Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't know that person. But you go over and you strike up a conference, find out the person's got something. Can I pray for you? Oh, yeah. And that's what the, uh, uh, there's, there's people that go out and they call that treasure hunting. They ask the Holy Spirit where to lead them and guide them. And the Holy Spirit will give them the color of clothes or a, some, in a, a store or someplace. And they go... Uh, like a friend, uh, a, a good friend, in, uh, when we were pastoring in Yakima, he wasn't feeling good that morning, so he wasn't going to come to church. He contacted me and told me he couldn't be there. He just wasn't feeling good. But his mom wanted to go to church. She went to another church. And so he was in his sweats and stuff. He said, okay, Mom, I'll take you. So he drove her to church. On the way back, he just felt prompted. They're going to Target. Well, I don't want to go on Target. I'm not dressed to go into Target. And he just felt, go into Target. Okay. So he went, stopped pulling in the parking lot, walked into, where not? Go back by the container rack or something like that. So he walked back by the container rack and he was just standing there. Well, right next, behind it was, was a book area. And so a, pers- the, a person was there talking to one of the, the clerks there and said, well, I'm looking for a Bible. Do you know any recommendations on a Bible? And this clerk says, I don't have a clue. Well, Doug heard that and said, well, maybe that's what the Lord sent me here. So he went over and talked to the guy. He says, you know, he started telling him about different Bibles. And, oh, man, thank you so much. I was asking the Lord, I wanted a Bible, and I, I, I don't know what, what you're going to get. You answered my question. See, that's, that's being led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit. He dwells right here with inside of us. And, and our ear becoming tuned to listen to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit. What a gift the whole, that God has given us, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Num- number three, John 14, 15 through 18. If you love me, keep my commandments. And, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And he may abide with, with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Whom the, <clears throat> the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But, but you know him for he will dwell within you and will be with you and be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So here, this, this is a scripture. So he's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now he's, the, this, this gift is in, in us. He will dwell inside of us. Number four is uh, Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. And if heirs of God, then joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. That we are the children of God. Think about that for a minute. What does that really mean? The relationship that we have with God. You know, all the people of earth that worship gods, they're, they're, they're all false gods, for number one. But they're all subjects to that God. And that God will dictate to them and tell them what to do, what they can't do, and rule over them. But here, he's telling us, because Jesus came to the earth, he gave, gave us a relationship that we are heirs and sons of God. Now, ladies, I want you to, to, to not be offended because you're a son, called a son. And so if you can handle it for a few years, I will be a bride of Christ for eternity. I will be the wife of God for eternity. So it's not a, it's not a gender issue. We're all sons of God. And so, so it's, think about that relationship. The most high God of the heavens and the earth came for us to give us a gift that so now we are not subjects to Him, but we are heirs of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that we will rule and reign with Him for eternity. That we're not under some oppressive God that's trying to push us down, but no, we're going to have relationship with God. Oh man, it just it, it blows your mind the, the, of this gift that was given to us. That if we can just comprehend in our natural mind, what does it mean to be a child of God, a son of God, an heir? Oh man. Number, number five. Fifth, Re Revelations 19, 6 or 8. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as a sound of many waters, and the sound of many thunders, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. We're not only sons of God and heirs of God, but we will be married to the Lord Jesus. There's a, it's something you just begin to ponder this, what Jesus has done for us. What a magnificent gift that he is giving us the keys to the kingdom. That we will, we will be with God, we will rule with God, we will reign with God, whatever. Think about what it's going to be like, you know, the song we sing, 10,000 years and we've only just begun. Well, think 100,000 years. Think a million years from now. My this is my definition of heaven. You may have, some of you have heard it. This, this is my definition. It's really easy. Oh, wow. Can we do that? Oh, wow. That's it, that we can do that. We can participate. Oh, wow. That heaven, heaven's going to be an oh, wow experience every day because God is infinite. God is infinite in all dimensions. He's not three-dimensional. We're in a three-dimensional four when they use time. Some of the uh, scientists say that, that we're, there's actually ten uh, dimensions, four are known and three are unknown. God is infinite, infinite in so many different dimensions, and that we have not even t uh, t touched the, uh, the tip of who God is and what God's greatness is. And that what He's going to be revealing to us his, 
his children, his sons, his heirs, and his uh, <clears throat> uh, joint heirs, and be married to the Lamb of God, Jesus, for eternity. This, this should actually blow us away to think about. You know, but the enemy doesn't want us to think about what God has done for us. And think that you know, church is religion. Church is a place you go and you got to do the do's and don'ts and all this kind of stuff. That, that, that's, it's a projection of the law. Jesus didn't bring us under the law. He brought us into grace. And so it comes because it's a love relationship. If we, need, we have to totally understand that church is a love relationship, not a religious experience. And what the world wants to do is have us ex- experience God as a religious experience that you do's and don'ts and you have to wear the right clothes, you've got to do the right things, you've got to act the right way, and all that. But God has given us a relationship with Him. And it's, my motivation is not because the law, over here in the law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. The law says that. And so if I break that, thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm breaking the law. Over here it says, I don't want to commit adultery because I love my God. I don't want to commit adultery with my wife because I love my wife. It's a love relationship, not a law relationship. But the world wants us to focus on the law. And what happens, people have in the world have a concept of the church as law, law, law. And the devil exploits that to rob us of the relationship that God wants with us. The intimacy that he wants with us. I don't go out and I don't play with the Ouija board. Because I love my God and I don't want to focus on anything demonic. I don't want to open that into my heart and my life because it will bring a breach in my relationship with God. And I do that out of love. I don't look at a pornography because I don't want to open a door, but I don't want it to be a bring, bring a breach between my wife and I. It's a love relationship. And so these gifts that God has given us is all out of love. He loves us. See, Adam could have had this. But he wanted to be like God. The devil deceived him. But think about it. What has God given us? We're not, we'll never be gods. But we'll probably be about as close as you can get because of the relationship we have. We're his sons and daughters. We are in total relationship. We are married to Jesus Christ for eternity. See, to, to be God... You have to have no beginning, no end. There is, it's outside of the realm of God. <clears throat> God is outside of the known universe. He is outside of it all. And there, there's no beginning and no end. You and I were created beings. You and I were created and we were born into this. And so we have a beginning. So, and there's people out there who says, well, we will, we, will be, we will be gods. No, we will never be gods. But we have an intimate relationship, a love relationship, that we will rule and reign with Christ for whatever the future beholds. But I know it's going to be glorious because it's, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And so the focus here this morning uh, is, is there's gifts the gifts that He gave to us. Are we willing to unpackage those gifts? Are we willing to invite Jesus into our heart? See, if we don't invite Jesus into our heart, what we have is we have religion. And what makes that transition from religion to relationship is you invite Him into heart. The day I invited my wife into my heart, 44 years ago, she got me. And I love her with all of my heart. And so the same thing when I invited Jesus into my heart. And so just a little bit of my testimony here as I, as I wrap up. Uh, in uh, 1970, we, uh, my family, <coughs> well, we, growing up, we, were, we would go to church, but we were known as CEO Christians, Christmas and Easter only. 
And uh, once in a while, my mom would get us to go to church. My mom and dad were, were uh, uh, accepted the Lord at uh, Disciples of Christ down on Washington Avenue uh, about the time I was born. Uh, and uh, so I went to school, and my, I mean, to, to Sunday school with my, my oldest sister who taught Sunday school. But I mainly went because I wanted to go to ice cream afterwards the tasty freeze down the street. So, uh, so I had that, that knowledge of God. Uh, the Ten Commandments I had by the net, by side of my bed that came out when the movie came out. And I would pray to, try to pray to God as the Ten Commandments. And it wasn't a relationship. It was more of uh, this religion. Because that's what it seemed to me was religion. So then... Uh, some friends of ours went, moved to another church, Highland First Christian Church over here, and there was, they talked about a new pastor, uh, Teresa Morgan. Uh, they're still, she's there on that downhill side of the COVID, so they, did, they wanted to give it another week. But she, her family was going there, and we knew some other people, so we started going there. And this pastor, Dan Anderson, man, there was just something about him that was different than all the other people. And so what happened is my mom didn't have to try to force us to go to church on Sunday. It was like we wanted to go. There was something about him. And so we started to go, and so I, I talk, met with Dan, and so uh, I was water baptized. They didn't have a baptismal, so the first Christian church over in Pasco, I was, I was water baptized. And, uh, but not too long after that, he left and had no idea why he left. And so, so uh, then in 19... Uh, 1971, my sister, my oldest sister Dolores, who taught Sunday school, her and her husband lived in Alaska, uh, contacted the family. She could never have children. Her and her first husband couldn't have children, so they adopted a boy. Uh, so she could never. Uh, so she re uh, remarried. They he worked in Alaska, so they moved to Alaska, and she sent everybody a card. It says, "I am pregnant." And, wow, Dolores is pregnant. So in uh, February of 72, Mom and Dad went to Alaska, which is that way, and uh, were there when Eddie was born. Found out the little church in Alaska laid hands on my sister and brother-in-law, and that month they conceived. Jump ahead, three years later, they, well, now we're healed. It didn't happen until they had hands laid on them and they were healed. My mom and dad came back and introduced me to the Holy Spirit. I'd been water baptized. I'd been out, but I still did not have the experiential part of the relationship. And so that that night, I I, I prayed and. Lord, I want this Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in tongues. I want this. Because I was reading the New Testament. Oh, Lord, why isn't there miracles today? Why, why aren't miracles happening? I can see them in the New Testament, but why don't we see them today? So I, uh, I prayed, went to sleep. Next night I was praying, and my grandma had passed away from cancer. And I prayed, Lord, I could have prayed for my grandma and she could have been healed. Lord, I want your gift of the Holy Spirit and I want to speak in tongues. And I rolled over to go to sleep. And in my heart, I felt this warmth like Ben Gay inside. And it started radiating through my body and I felt this warm presence all over me and my, my tongue began to feel like cotton. And all of a sudden, I could see all my daddy. That moment, I knew God was real. The power of His presence was so real to me. God wants us to experience Him, not know about Him. He wants us to experience Him. That every one of us can have an experiential relationship with God because He loves you. And He's given us gifts so that we can, we can have that. And that night, I unpackaged that gift of the Holy Spirit and it set me on a course where I am today. 
We need the Holy Spirit more than ever before in this hour that we're living in. We need the direction and the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I know there's, there's people out there that thought, well, this, this Holy Spirit thing is of the devil. Well, that was for then, back then. No, it's for today. God never gives something that He pulls it back. It's for this group, but not for you. No, it's a gift that was given to us. We have to unpackage it. And, and what, hap- what happens a lot of times is I have to suppress my pride. It's, I'm acting stupid. That's what the thoughts you'll get. Well, that's stupid. That's, that's humiliating. You know, it's, it's gibberish. Who knows? See, faith, like I've shared before, faith is taking a risk. Lord, I'm going to step out of this boat. And it may sound stupid, and it may sound foolish, it may sound, but Lord, I'm going to step out of this boat, and I'm going to believe You that You're going to meet me And I'm going to have a moment with you that will never be taken away from me. You don't get that in religion. You only get that in relationship. The same way that moment I said I do to my wife, I knew it because it was an intimacy that will last forever. The same thing in our relationship with God. It's an intimacy that will last forever. And no one will ever take it away from me. And some people ask, well, why am I standing up doing political? Why am I doing all these things? It's because God has called me to be a light in the midst of the darkness. And to stand up and speak the truth with boldness. And leave my death into His hands. Because of a relationship. Not because of an agenda. Not because of anything else. It's a relationship with my God and a love for His people. And my prayer is, Lord, help me lead Your people in this hour. And so this morning is, I want to leave you with this. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, and you're watching on Facebook Live, thank bless you. But if you have not invited Jesus into your heart, now's the time to do it. Today is a day of salvation. You have no guarantee of tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. I'll tell you this. There was a friend, a a mechanic we went to for several years. We invited him to things when we had Scrooge and stuff here. We witnessed to him, and one of the other pastors witnessed to him and stuff. He never accepted the Lord. And one night, he was driving out towards Finley and went head-on with a semi-truck, and he was dead. He didn't make it. I, I, I pray that he did. I, I don't know. Today is the day of salvation. The free gift of salvation is today, and you have to unwrap it. The Holy Spirit is for day. You have to unwrap it. It's, they're out there. Jesus gave them under the tree. They're out there. But you and I, each one of us, all five of these, the first, salvation, the second, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Third, the, uh, the indwelling Holy Spirit. The, the gifts of the Spirit. Fourth, being sons of God. Heirs. Heirs to the Most High. And the Bride of Christ. So now it's in your hands what you're going to do with it. Today is the day of salvation. And God wants you to experience Him. He wants you to feel Him in your life. That He's not some thing off over there that you just believe in no he wants he wants your heart and he will touch you and he will fill you with his presence it's there for you to unwrap so let's close in prayer lord we thank you lord for this morning we thank you lord for your presence we thank you lord for your anointing lord that you are with us no matter where we are you are with us lord and we're excited that you are moving in so many people's lives this morning and throughout this world. Today is the day of the harvest. You're calling people home all around the world. And Lord, we pray that that men and women all over will be coming to You, Lord, to receive the gifts that You have given them. That gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and help us walk through this hour ahead that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk not in fear, 
but in confidence and boldness, Lord, that you are with us and you will lead us and guide us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, I pray you bless those on Facebook Live and bless those of us that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. We will see you next week, those of you on Facebook Live. So, hallelujah.